What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here for another edition of the weekly sports card market update. Recording this one early Saturday afternoon, so I do not know the results of Game 2 of the World Series. But Game 1 was obviously pretty magical. And yes, spoilers for an upcoming chart. Freddie Freeman did get a price bump already off of his Grand Slam in extra innings last night. The NBA season has started, and we are seeing little bump-ups. Even though the off-season was quiet for basketball cards, we are seeing some small FOMOs and initial reactions to the first couple of weeks of games. All this and more, but before we dive in, a shout-out to channel partner comc.com sponsor of the weekly sports card market update and longtime partner of the channel now your home for buying and selling sports cards non-sports cards tcgs even comic books you could buy in the breaks the whole nine yards i recently surpassed five thousand dollars in sales and i am fastly creeping towards six thousand in sales. I got some cards out. I have a card out to grading right now through them. You can pretty much do it all over at comc.com. Once that card gets back, I will have a small shipment of stuff to send home for us all to review. Uh, that was a CGC graded card. It should be back probably in about a week or two if I had to guess uh, based off the timelines. I sent that in a little over a month ago. So if you're not using ComC, go check them out first thing to discuss this popped up saturday morning slash afternoon this video actually just got posted by the sports card madness guys uh they basically are showing off more scan or not more scans but scans of tops mercury boxes and sharing information that they say they have that goes over that there's been dozens of Mercury boxes scanned by the CT scanning company, that the CT scanning company is so busy that they are running 18 hours a day scanning sports card boxes. And also that they are beginning to work with group submitters, potentially, to get stuff sent in. So you can send your stuff off to the group submitter and the group submitter will send it off to them, which sounds absolutely wild on like seven different levels of how something could possibly go wrong with that whole situation. But if you're sending boxes in to get scan, you reap what you sow. Anyway, they do show footage on here uh, of the Wemby boxes being scanned. I'm going to pop, I'm going to mute this real quick. And I'll just kind of let this play. Here is the Mercury box being scanned. You can clearly see it is a patch card. It's out of 75. You can see the auto. And you can even see that it looks like it's a two-color patch, potentially. There it is. That simple, folks. Uh, <laughs> the CT scanning thing continues to be the... Everyone knows about it. Nobody really wants to talk about it or admit probably how rampant it actually is because it is one of the few things that if the client list ever got out on who's using these services, I think it could ultimately be the domino that collapses the house of cards. I think this is one of those things that could drastically shift everything but i think most people companies content creators influencers just random folks in the hobby want to turn a blind eye to it because it's too much disruption in the space people sitting on stashes of sealed wax are concerned for obvious reasons Companies that sell sealed wax, like Tops, Panini, Upper Deck, they have to be concerned about this because it undermines the concept of their entire business. Breakers, if their name's on the list, they're definitely concerned about it. If they're not, 
if you're not a breaker that, you know, or if you're a breaker that's doing everything correct and you're on the up and up, you have to be concerned about what this means for breaking as a whole if this thing actually blows up. Now, that, like I said, that's a big if because a majority of people don't want to acknowledge that this is happening out there. I think you are absolutely a madman or woman to be buying high-end boxes. Unless you're buying them on release straight from the company, I think you're crazy to go on eBay and drop 9 or 10K on a Mercury box, on a vintage box, on an old Pokemon box, on a flawless case, on National Treasures, whatever. Mercury, this product was basically designed to be CT scanned. I mean, it really was. It's eight cards. They're all serial numbered. There's patches in a lot of them. There's autos on a lot of them. And you could see how easy it is for them to do this. Like, it's, it's just absolutely wild how easy it is for them to do this. And when the box price is that expensive, if you're paying 10K, 8K, 9K, 7K even for a box, and you could send it off and get it CT scanned for a couple of hundred bucks, like, why wouldn't you? Take a little peek under the hood, see if there's anything good in there, if it's worthwhile, keep it for yourself, stack the break for your best customer, whatever the case might be. If it's not, throw it back on eBay. And I've seen a lot of chatter about Backyard this week unrelated to this per se. Uh, I guess they had some absolutely insane hits out of select basketball WNBA for Caitlin Clark. And they had some crazy Wemby break where they hit like four white sparkle Wembys all in the same break for the same customer. Just saying. Just saying. Speaking of Tops Mercury, the one of the product hits, maybe the biggest product hit, is up on Fanatics Collect. This actually ends later today when you're all watching this. Currently sitting at 36 thousand for the jordan logo man one of one so it'll be interesting to kind of see where this thing ends up and that's kind of one of the other things about mercury right now a lot of the big cards have been hit i believe the base 101 super fractor has been hit i think multiple of the 101s patch cards have been hit i don't know that i've seen a lebron wemby dual auto hit yet i could be wrong on that i know jeff wilson hits a shack uh, and I've seen the Jason Kidd one floating around on eBay a couple times. But I don't know if a LeBron Wemby has been hit yet. It could have been. And maybe I just missed it with New York Comic Con and everything. But current prices on base autos are pretty reasonable. Uh, they're down to, you can see there, 1000 bucks, 1250 These are all out of 99 There's one there for $1,800. Uh, here's a PSA 10. PSA 10 out of 99 went for 1500 bucks on a Wemby auto. Here's another one for 1700. So the base Wemby autos are going pretty cheap in the grand scheme of things. And I think this says more about this much supply hitting the market all at the same time, not the overall supply of Wemby autos, but when this product's getting open like this, that's a lot hitting the market at the same time. I think the way this all nets out, and I still believe this, that over, overall speaking, there is going to be way less Wemby rookie autos in general, in bulk, when you factor in all the product that's going to come out with him on it. But this many hitting all at once is not great. On the patches, I was curious to see what those are going for. Uh, I just put Topps Mercury Auto Patch. Uh, here's an out of 50, went for $27.50. Uh, this is a big boy out of five. A red went for, I don't know, 39000 crossed out. Uh, napkin patches are going for about 1500 to 2K, uh, depending on the numbering. This one's a debut game for 3700 If I was chasing a Wemby patch auto out of this product, this is probably what I would be looking for. Um, one of the debut game patches, 
I would shoot for that because I actually think out of all the nonsense in this product outside of the, like the one ones those are the ones that probably have the best chance to hold value long term or be desirable long term if big if Wemby becomes what everyone thinks that he is going to be but to have an RPA with a debut patch jersey inside of it I think is pretty unique and that would be the type that I would go after I would definitely want to pay the premium over a napkin patch for about half the price you know a napkin patch is going for 1700 for about twice as much you can get a debut patch I would much rather have the debut patch you know here's one here that went for 3k in a napkin patch PSA 9 I would definitely be looking that direction if you are going to go that route staying in the tops world they could not resist I called this one a mile away uh, they do have a brawny slash LeBron tops now it will be over by the time you are all watching this video it's just an artist mock-up I was hoping they would at least I guess better this than some pure Photoshop job where they make you think it's from the game um I would have liked to seen a you know like a back shot of the two of them walking out on the court where you don't have to see the Lakers logo on the front but you just see you know the James Jr. and James across the backs of their jersey as they're kind of like checking into the game simultaneously maybe that photo didn't exist I have to imagine that's out there somewhere I would have liked to see that over like this artist renditions version of this but of course outside the numbered stuff there is a big chase in a one-of-one one LeBron slash Bronny auto I know the James family is a lightning rod for content people either love them or love to hate them and Bronny is a whole other lightning rod on his own at the moment I thought it was a cool moment when the two of them played together I'm a Cleveland guy I don't know what you want me to say I thought it was cool I didn't get all teary-eyed and weepy I just thought that it was actually kind of cool that a father and son played together on an NBA court I don't care about all the other nonsense behind it that might be a semi-hot take other news of the week the Otani 50-50 ball sold for four million dollars 4.3 to be semi-precise was bought by a Taiwanese company so an actual company purchased this ball I think as an investment piece I really don't know what they're going to do with it uh, I think a lot of people in the collectible space would be surprised on this high-end stuff of how much of this is actually purchased by either companies or maybe even other auction houses. Uh, I think there would be a lot of people surprised if you actually look through the buying lists of some of the super, super high-end stuff. Um, but I, I haven't really talked about this ball that much. It, it's really not card related per se. It's more sports memorabilia. So I figured I'd bring it up since it did finally sell. It did go for crazy, crazy money. Uh, that is still under a legal fight in regards to who's actually going to get that money. So we'll see how all that shakes out. In other tops news, I know some of us like the DJ rip on a budget. Uh, tops holiday which is a popular product. A lot of people really like Topps Holiday. Is up on Fanatic's website, 30 bucks for a mega box and Topps or Fanatic's exclusive rather uh Topps update blaster boxes or value boxes whatever the hell they call them now are up on Fanatic's website as well. I have not ordered any holiday. I did order like 5 uh of the value boxes i had like 150 in fan cash burning a hole in my pocket from new york or from uh, fanatics events from going to fanatics fest so i've cashed that in uh and purchased some of those boxes with that so once those come in uh five boxes is a lot for an individual video maybe we'll do a little live stream or something uh and rip a handful of them i have not ripped any tops update yet in other new release news select wmba has come out and the prices are out of this world now i saw some people complaining about you know did panini potentially 
market manipulate this. Uh, they had first off the line boxes go up. I guess the quantity released was pretty, pretty low and they sold out very quickly and it kind of artificially inflated the hobby box prices. Select WNBA hobby boxes. This is sold listings are going regularly for eight fifty to nine hundred dollars. Wild stuff. I was curious. I just did WNBA select Caitlin Clark. Her base cards are going for crazy money. This is just a concourse. Nothing, nothing fancy. No silver, no nothing. $110. People are smacking the bin. This is an insert. Hunter Bucks. Uh, crazy, crazy stuff. Some of the numbered stuff's going for even higher. Uh, here we have a premier level going for 170. Uh, here's an Enfuego insert going for 200. Some once again, people just smacking the bin on this stuff. I have to imagine this future insert is fairly common and it's going for a hundred dollars, hundred and forty dollars for a premier. Uh, here's a court side wet for 225. That looks like a steal based off of what some of this other stuff is going for right now. This is once again, it all comes down to supply and demand. Caitlin Clark just does not have a lot of licensed WNBA stuff yet. This is her first real big release. So it hasn't, the pool has not gotten watered down yet. Give Panini a little bit of time. Um, if I was chasing Caitlin Clark stuff, I would probably wait unless it's something super rare. Let all the rookie product kind of flush itself out and then maybe dive in later in the winter uh, when things settle down a little bit because you can only imagine how much prism of this product they are going to print. Here's blaster boxes. Select WNBA blaster boxes are pre-selling on eBay for $75 to $80. What crazy times. I did look so far, only two have hit eBay. I think this is going to be one of the bigger chase cards for her out of this product. Uh, the Select Color Blast. Uh, this is the black Color Blast that they do in Select. I actually like the looks of this card quite a bit. Uh, this, this one's up for 10K starting bid. Will it catch a bid? I don't think so. Uh, the other one's up for like 20,000 or something stupid. So... Uh, we'll see how, if this one catches a bid or not, I do have it watched. We'll keep an eye on that one. The FOMO for Caitlin Clark stuff right now is absolutely insane. WNBA in general, like Caitlin Clark is pretty hot. Um, Angel Reese is obviously pretty popular. Everybody loves themselves from Cameron Brink on the college side. Everybody likes Paige Bukers from UConn and Juju. So lots of excitement around women's basketball, both on the WNBA and the college level. Next weekend, before we dive into charts and graphs really quick, um, I am hoping, it's not locked in yet, uh, I am hoping to attend a friend of the channel, Brad Beeman, who runs the Ship Shawana show, is putting on his Fort Wayne show next Saturday, November 2nd, 9 a.m., 100 plus tables. This is not in Shipshawana. This one's in Fort Wayne. Uh, there is a trade night the night before. You could find all the details over on B Sports Instagram page. Um, my only real decision here is, is do I want to go the night before or do I want to drive out the morning of? Since this is slightly closer, uh, I could get up early Saturday morning and run out there and be there relatively close to when the show opens. It's a little over three hours for me to get out there. Uh, but I may end up going out the night before and doing the trade night and stuff. We'll see. Uh, but this is next weekend. The show used to be on Thanksgiving weekend. He moved it up to get it off that weekend. And what I'm truly excited about is the announcement for the March Ship Shawana show. Because I think that one's going to be a banger. Let's dive into some charts and graphs powered by Market Movers. Link in the description down below. We're only looking at a couple today. Uh, I need to wrap up a little bit earlier than normal because I have some family stuff to do on Saturday afternoon and I need to get out the door. That's why I'm recording earlier in the day. Freddie Freeman had the big home run. Freddie Freeman's prices have already 
jumped up, even though they just happened last night. Sometimes it takes like a day to see this stuff. Not in this case. And I just pulled up some more common selling cards. This is his PSA 10 base tops chrome and his PSA 10 base tops. Uh, both jumped 60% in one day, just based off of one game winning home run. You can see this is the 90 days. The yellow line, line is the chrome. The blue line is the base. They were very consistent in what they sold for. And then boom, up, up and away. They both go see what happens from here as the series moves on. Like I said, you all know what happened in game two already. I do not have that information yet. So we will steer away from diving too deep in the baseball hot takes uh, because it has already happened. On the NBA side of the street, uh, this is just over the last seven days looking at Prism Silvers. Uh, we have had some price movement on guys already with people overreacting to the first couple of games of the season. See it every single year. John Morant, 25% bump up already in the first few days uh, as he has looked good uh, and kind of reminding the league that he is talented when he can get out of, when he can get out of his own way and not do dumb stuff. Trey Young having a strong start to the season. Uh, he's up 73%. LaMelo Ball has had a good couple big statted games uh, for the Hornets. He's gotten a little bump up in price. Tyrese Maxey's been getting some pretty good run with Embiid being out. Paolo Banchero has had a very strong start to the season. His stuff is up ever so slightly. Uh, Brandon Miller got hurt right off the get, so we'll see how that plays out. Scoot Henderson has had a couple good scoring games. To start the season, he's up 26%. Uh, Bilal Koulibaly is up 50% as he's looked pretty good with the Wizards, even though that team is absolute garbage. Uh, Benedict Mathern has looked pretty good for the Pacers, even though they got smoked by the Knicks the other night. My Cleveland Cavaliers look absolutely fantastic. Do they have the softest schedule in the world? Uh, they've played the Raptors and the Pistons. And tonight, once again, this game's already happened. They play the Washington Wizards. Come on down. Uh, but the Cavs get a nice soft schedule. That means they probably lost tonight to the Wizards. I wouldn't be surprised. So the NBA season is underway. Prices are a moving ever so slightly on these guys. 10, 20, 30% bumps for the fast starters. We'll see how things play out as the season moves forward. I'm just glad to have it back. It is just so nice to pull up and be like, oh, Cavs game tonight. Yes. It's just... It's nice just having that sitting there at the end of the day as a little nugget that I know I could sit back and relax an NBA basketball game of my favorite team, and that is back in my life for the next few months. That is all I got for you boys and girls today. We will catch you on the next one. Peace.